Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to the Mental Wellness Wake Up Show, a weekly podcast where growth minded, creative people come to learn best practices from both spirituality and psychology that create lasting well being. I am your host, mental wellness expert, improvised acting teacher, therapist, and coach, Dawn McMillan. Let's get to it. All right, you wonderful, amazing beings, you. What I want to talk about today is Ram Das. <laughs> so the logic of this podcast, if there is any, is what is occurring for me in my world, either because of my own inquiry or because of what's being brought to my attention by friends, family, clients, the media. And I trust the process that as we are going through this journey of life together, that we can be of service to each other by exploring our own understandings and sharing them, yeah? So I'm on a Ram Dass trip right now. So in case you don't know who Ram Dass is, let me just give you a brief overview. So Ram Dass was uh, born Richard Alpert. He was educated as a psychologist He got his PhD at Stanford, woohoo, and then went to go work at Harvard. While he was at Harvard, he got entwined with Timothy Leary, who at the time was exploring the effects of psychedelics. For for several years, they worked together on what do psychedelics do for consciousness? What is their purpose? How do we use them? Ultimately, Ram Dass ended up going to... India, where he became a devotee of someone whom he calls Maharaji, Maharaji, which I believe means great king. Uh, Maharaji was born Neem Karoli Baba and was a devotee of uh, Bhakta Yoga. So Ramdas becomes this spiritual devotee and over time becomes this spiritual teacher. And one of his gifts was as a Westerner who had done really the mainstream Western thing, right? Went to college, went to graduate school, became a Harvard professor, was a good translator of Eastern philosophy to Westerners. In his later life, he did not renounce psychedelics, but begin to understand that their point was as a tool and a stepping stone so that people from different walks of life, particularly Westerners who don't have the same spiritual traditions as they do in the East, would get a glimpse of what is possible through the use of psychedelics and then do the inner work, the yoga, to be able to achieve those states without the psychedelics. So in his later life, he pretty much didn't use psychedelics as much and became more interested in the practices of yoga, of Hindu and Buddhist philosophy, and doing spiritual practices and being a spiritual teacher. Okay. He became even more well-known after a while because he was one of Wayne Dyer's teachers. And if you don't know who Wayne Dyer is, because we're going back uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, if you don't know who Wayne Dyer is, Wayne Dyer is considered a spiritual teacher and um, kind of is a member of like that new age royalty by writing books in the 70s and 80s and teaching into um, the 90s. Okay, so that's who we're talking about. We're talking about Ram Das, who you know, was born in 1931 and died in 2019. So he had a very long teaching life and he created this foundation, or I believe he created it. It may have been created after his death. I'm not sure. Called the Love Serve Remember Foundation. And currently the Love Serve Remember Foundation has a podcast where they curate talks of Ram Dass's on certain topics. So I really enjoy this, this uh, podcast because it, it allows me to go deep on one thing. So they'll take a a sample from one speech and another speech and put them together in a way that really works for me. What I am tripping out on (laughs) right now is one from December on enlightenment. Yeah, enlightenment. This is my quest. (laughs) And if you know me personally, you're like, Dawn, you got a long way to go factual. But one of the understandings that I have come to 
is that, you know, persistence often pays off, especially in recovery and in the pursuit of uh, higher consciousness and better functioning. So here I am doing what I can to become a more whole, more complete, more evolved human being. And so along comes this Ram Dass podcast. And he says something in the context of this podcast, which keeps blowing my mind and I cannot stop thinking about it. The phrase is, desire creates the universe. Okay, more context? Yeah. So it comes in the context of him being taught, because he was a perpetual student as well as a teacher. And his teacher said um, that desire is, you know, desire meaning craving is a problem, that it is uh, a form of, uh, what's the word? I can't even words right now. But that desirelessness is moksha, is freedom. And the idea being that when we are completely enslaved to our cravings, we are not free. And that freedom comes from desirelessness. If you're listening closely, you're going to recognize a part of the teachings of the Buddha, right? All life is suffering. And the way you get out of suffering is to let go of craving. And the way you get out of craving is to follow the Eightfold Path. So Westerners specifically really struggle against this. What do you mean life is suffering? We can be happy all the time. Well, yeah, once you reach enlightenment, happiness, the kind and the moksha and the freedom that these spiritual teachers are talking about is not the happiness that goes, that comes from uh, suppressing your negative feelings, slapping a smile on your face and wandering through life, getting your ego needs gratified. So when we talk about desirelessness, we're not talking about like never having preferences, never liking things, never wanting things. What desirelessness means in this context, and this is where language gets tricky because there's not necessarily a good English word for it. So that's why I like the word craving. We're talking about non-attachment to craving, to where getting the thing, great. But not getting the thing doesn't have to be a disaster. So that's the context in which this phrase popped up. Desire creates the universe. And I think the kindergarten version of that teaching is desire, craving, wanting, seeking, pursuing, attaching, creates your universe, my universe. The ways in which I am controlled by my cravings is creating the universe that I experience. I was talking with someone recently who is really just upset about something. And as, you know, a good therapist, I was guiding them through what are you believing to be true that is creating your suffering? Right? We don't respond to the stimulus in our world, the thing that happened. We respond to our interpretation about the thing that happened. So as we were working through that, this particular person began to see, oh, my interpretation of this event is that it is so awful I can't recover from it. And changing that interpretation to, this is not something that I prefer. And... I can move forward from this was very freeing. So, okay. Can you... <laughs> Here come the doggies. We've got Bertram whining and panting. And then we have Eggy with the pitter patter of little doggy feet crashing into things with her cone of shame after her surgery. Are we fine, guys? Are we good? You say hello? Okay. Let me know if you need something. So desirelessness is about not being so attached that, hold please. 
So where were we? <laughs> Desirelessness is about not a non-attachment, non-attachment, not being detached. Like I'm holding myself apart and I don't care about anything, but being non-attached. Let's take a side rant. Care. Look up the definition of care and ask yourself if that's what you want to be doing. Okay. So non-attachment means that you have your preferences and you enjoy the heck out of them. And can you be at peace if things go differently? Can you recognize that there's a perfection at the center of everything? What? There's a perfection at anything? Okay. Maybe. What if you pretended like there were? I don't know the capital T truth about the world and the universe and how things go. And neither do you. So the question becomes, what is helpful? What is useful? We can get so rigid in these are facts when 99% of the time, the things to which we are most attached are opinions. And those opinions create suffering. So what if you operated as if there's a perfection at the center of everything that cleaning up puppy poop off your carpet is equally as valuable, equally as peace inducing, equally as rewarding as finding a surprise hundred dollars in your pocket of your winter coat, right? This is, this is what we're talking about that what is occurring in the outer world is not sufficient to completely destroy your peace. So non-attachment is freedom, which gets us back to desire creates the universe. So the surface level understanding based on all the things that I've just said and some basic spiritual teaching is that desire is creating your universe. Now, the first objection is going to be, um, if desire were creating my universe, I would have a much nicer house, a much nicer car, a more gorgeous spouse. I'm kidding. Some of you think that though. I would have this amazing life and I don't. So the response to that is, what are you attached to? What are you attached to? Are you more attached to your story about who you are and how life works than you are? to having peace of mind? Are you attached to the idea that a good life equals being rich and famous? Are you attached to the idea that beauty means thinness or low body fat or muscleness or whiteness or tallness? What are you attached to? Is it possible? Is it possible that if you changed your level of attachment to what you think things are supposed to be, you might discover that the way things are is perfectly peaceful. That is the first level <laughs> in my understanding, right? I told you I don't have answers this time. I'm just exploring this question. Desire creates the universe. So Ram Das goes on to say, I'm going to lose some of you here, I think, but stay with me. Stay with me. Be an anthropologist exploring what these crazy spiritual people think. So Ram Dass goes on to say that the reason that we are in form is because there's a, some part of us that desires to be. Yes, this is based on the idea that we are infinite beings having a specific set of experiences and that after this body, we'll do other experiences. So the desire creates the universe. The reason that we are experiencing a physical universe is because we have chosen to in some way, that we desire to in some way that we are experiencing this experience because we are somehow attached to this experience. And that if we wanted, and these words are, are so paltry, but that let's, let's for the purposes of this conversation, uh, this life is not your only life. This body is not your only identity. So then afterwards, you could experience an entirely different kind of universe. You could experience an entirely different kind of existence, an entirely different kind of being that you could be, I don't know, 
a demigod of some kind in some kind of universe. You could be an energy being, you could be a light being, you could have an, you know, instead of a four dimensional universe, you could be in an 11 dimensional universe. I don't know. That's the question. Desire creates the universe. Whew. I don't think Ram Dass has the capital T truth either. He's a person exploring like the rest of us. But that is a very evocative thing to have said. Desire is entrapment. Desirelessness is freedom. Hopping over to Buddha, the way to freedom is to follow the Eightfold Path. And desire creates the universe. So what, what plays in my mind is, if that were true, if my desires are creating my universe, and a lot of law of attraction people are going to be like, yeah, of course, but I think that's, uh, <laughs> I think that is not a complete understanding, because that gets us into um, victim blaming, which some people are fine with. <laughs> some people are fine with. Uh, desire creates the universe. So anything that is happening to you, you create it with your personal desire and therefore that's your experience. I don't buy that. I think it's more complicated than that. I think when you have 8 billion people wandering around somewhere interacting with each other, that there is something beyond our personality, something beyond what happens between our two ears that creates our experiences. Like... I'm not a puppet master. I, I, my personality, me, Dawn, did not make the dogs come in here and make noise. Like that's, I don't think that that's how the universe works. I think they're little beings. I'm a little being. There's lots of people with heartbeats on this planet right now. Um, so I, I don't think it's a complete or, or a complete understanding to say that your personality, your ego your brain, you, the personality, are out here creating everything that happens to you that just doesn't track because there are things that happen that no rational being would choose. Yes, I know we're irrational. Okay, now I'm babbling. Desire creates the universe. I don't know what that means, but I do know the fact that it is sticking in my head means that there's a lesson there for me. If it is true that desire creates the universe, what do I do with that information and how do I take action from it? If it is true that craving creates suffering, that is what the Buddha meant by all life is suffering. We are craving and attached and non-craving creates freedom. How do I release more craving in order to achieve moksha, freedom, so that the universe that is created is a universe of freedom, a universe of enlightenment, a universe of connectedness, a universe of being one with everything. That's the question. And what coincidences is Professor Life bringing me to help me along my path? Uh, my friend Ro has a newsletter and that always starts with a quote. And the most recent one I read had a Ram Dass quote in it. And I'm like, coincidence. Da, 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 da. So I guess my, my offer to you is if craving creates suffering and non-attachment creates freedom and our attachment or non-attachments, desires are creating our universes. What would you like to do to create the universe you are currently experiencing? Okay, y'all. That's what I got. <laughs> That's what I got. You might want to pop into the Love Serve Remember Foundation. Maybe read some Ram Dass. Maybe check out Wayne Dyer or Maharaji and see if anything of their teachings pops for you. Desire creates the universe. Such a provocative thing to think about. And with that, I trust that you, being whole, perfect, and complete, 
as you are and being worthy and deserving as all the good that there is. You'll find a way forward that is beautiful and amazing and joyful and peaceful and enriching and fulfilling and delighting and even more fabulous than your ego mind can imagine. Okay. Until next time. I am so honored that you share time with me. If you've listened this far, then something here was of value to you. Would you please be a friend of the podcast and share it with at least one other person? The podcast is available on most platforms, including YouTube, and I need your help to get the word out. So please like, subscribe, and share, and a five-star review on iTunes would be chef's kiss. Thank you so much. See you next time.